Ryan coming to you from the EHS Management Forum in Tucson. Sitting here with Gary Niekirk, Director of Corporate Citizenship with Intel. Gary, you're going to be speaking in a couple minutes about conflict minerals and how Intel is addressing them. For those who aren't familiar with the term, what are conflict minerals? Conflict metals really refers to four metals that come out of Central Africa and parts of uh, the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. Those are tin, tantalum, tungsten, and gold. And these metals come out of that region, and some of the profits from the metal mining of, of those metals gets into the hands of kind of corrupt and uh, groups and gangs and warlords, and those profits are used to then do really terrible things against humanity and human rights issues in, in Africa. So there's a big push to um, remove the use of those metals f uh, from Africa, but primarily not have funds from metals mining in Africa used to uh, do to fund those really horrendous acts. Why is this an issue for Intel? Well that's a good question. I mean in the electronics industry we use a tin, we use tantalum and some of these metals. Very small amounts and by far most of it doesn't come from Africa. But the difficult thing is in the supply chain the way it's so diverse and so many layers you don't know where the metals actually come from. We don't buy a lot of metals directly. So we buy a part, has some metal on it, someone bought that for someone else, someone else, and all the way through the chain. So it was really difficult for us to figure this out and find out where are these metals coming from, where are they used. So one of the things we did was we sent letters to our suppliers. Hey, do you, use, do you know where the metals come from? Do you use these metals? Because we want to identify that and remove them and find out where they're coming from. We got a mixed response from the suppliers uh, some said, yeah, we know. Some said, we don't. Some said, we're good. We don't use any metals from Africa, but they couldn't prove it. And so we decided the only way to really solve this challenge is to go to the smelters. So jump over the entire supply chain and go right to the smelters where the ore comes into the smelter or refiner and then it's turned into a metal. Because once you have a piece of metal, you don't know where it came from. A piece of ore, you can trace back to the actual mine. So we started working with the smelters to figure out, do you know where your ore comes from? Do you know what mine, what country is that ore coming from? What did they say? Well, sometimes we went to a smelter and they said, oh yeah, we know where it comes from. It's shipped from R Rwanda. Well, then you start looking into it, and a country like Rwanda ships 180% of the actual metal that is produced in that country. They ship more than they have, which means a lot is being smuggled into these countries. So just even the, the shipping billing is not enough. You, so even knowing what country it came from, if it's one of the countries in Central Africa, it could be smuggled in because there's all kinds of smuggling going on in, into the different countries. So you really need a way to trace it back to a mine. So you can find it from a mine from Australia if you can kind of tag the shipment and be able to track it all the way through the smelter and then can they certify where and segregate their shipments coming in. And that's what we've been working on. Now we're working with the Electronics Industry Citizenship Coalition, the EICC, and to, to set up this conflict-free smelter program. So we can find smelters or refiners that do not take any materials in from those regions. They can track from mines and all the way through the system. And so we're going through smelter by smelter and certifying those smelters to say conflict free. And then the idea is to drive our supply chain. If you want to sell tantalum to us in a part, then you need to use one of these smelters because we know they're clean. For someone who hasn't yet begun to examine their supply chain on this level, what can they do to kind of get that information and start engaging their suppliers around this issue? Well, I think that's it. They need to start engaging their suppliers. There's actually a, a law that's being promulgated right now. It's called SEC 1502, and it's supposed to be out at the end of this year. So if you're a public company and you use these metals in your production or in the development of your products, um, you, you're going to need to know about this thing because you're going to have some compliance issues. But we had a company recently call us who makes uh, clothing. And you wouldn't think clothing would be a company that had potential for conflict metals, but they have zippers. They have the eyelets on the shoes, right? And they're going, man, we buy zippers. We don't know where the metal comes that goes into the zipper. We don't even know the composition of the metal used in the zipper necessarily. So you need to kind of look at all the products you have and then figure out what kind of metals could potentially be in those products and then start talking to your suppliers. And you might have to go several levels deep. And I do encourage people to go to the EICC, 
the Electronics Industry Citizenship Coalition website, you can kind of leverage off the work that's been done in the electronics industry. Because if you're in electronics, aerospace, automotive, um, if you have any kind of printed circuit board, because I said tin, remember, and there's tin lead solder, which is used in almost all electronics, you very likely could be impacted by this regulation. So it's uh, definitely something for people to pay attention to, and that's why we're having this session today on the topic.